be before you once again this day. If you're interested in following along, let's turn over to the book of Isaiah, chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. Throughout the preceding two chapters, we're seeing basically the the counting of the king of Assyria and his armies. That will be Sennacherib. And specifically with chapter 33, we're, we're noticing all the different condemnations the Lord, that is Jehovah, is pronouncing on him and Assyria at whole. So if you go through the first 11 verses, you'll see that kind of chronicled. And ultimately, he will be pronouncing judgment on this nation of Assyria. Now, a little bit of a background before the verses we'll read. Evidently, limestone is quite abundant in the area of Palestine. Well, in order to process limestone into a more usable form, which they would call lime, and we would as well, they would build these great kilns out of stone. I would liken it more or less to our grain silos. They were these large, open-roofed uh, kilns made of stone. And then instead of a doorway, it was more of a hallway in order to add the fuel to these, these kilns. What they would do, they would take shards and fragments, pieces of this limestone, and pack that kiln with all their sorts of shrubs and thorny bushes as the fuel source. Well, they would light this kiln, and you would see smoke, fire coming out of the top. And the whole idea behind the way this kiln was structured was the fires would consume all the brush, obviously, and then it would burn the limestone and produce the ashes in the form of lime. But it would use that doorway as an entrance for more air, and it would create a draft. So it would suck more oxygen into that kiln area to make a better flame. And then this lime could be used primarily for construction. It was used for uh, mortar and even whitewashing walls. Now before we read the verses we want to read as our text, I'm going to flip back to Isaiah chapter 31 and read verses 8 and 9. It says, Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomfited. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear. And his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. Now jumping back to Isaiah 33, I'd like to read our text, which begins there in verse 12. Isaiah 33, verse 12. It says, And the people shall be as the burnings of lime, as thorns cut up, Shall they be burned in the fire? Hear ye that are far off what I have done, and ye that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressors, that shaketh his hands from the holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from the hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. So again, the burnings of lime, this doesn't necessarily refer to the process of making lime. It refers to, re the, to the result of making the lime. 
When you burn that limestone, you're left with the fiery ashes that is known as lime. And then again, referencing the thorns that would be cut up and burned in the fire as the fuel to make the lime. This is the judgment of Assyria. They had been tormenting Israel. And their right, Israel's righteous judge is now going to defend Israel. And this is the judgment that will be passed and executed on the nation of Assyria. But we see who should be afraid. In verse 14. At this particular time in the passage, it's the hypocrites, those who are fear, fearful in Zion. And the challenge is given, who will be able to live with this devouring fire? Who's going to be able to live with the everlasting burnings? Well, for us today, it's any of those who are enemies of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. And James chapter 4. Those who are worldly have enmity between themselves and their Creator. They are enemies of God. And thus they must be enemies of the church. The only way to defeat them is by the word of God. Likewise, the only way to remain pure is by upholding and properly applying the word of God. For we know that our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. You see, the God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New Testament. He has not changed. He will not change. He is a consuming fire in this passage. He is still a consuming fire. Also consider 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. All those people who would choose not to do His will on earth, they're going to have their way in life after this life in the flesh except it will be eternal damnation. At that point, they'll be burned up in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who know, who know not the Lord. But this comes in stark contrast with those who would indeed be able to dwell with this fire and not be consumed by God. And it's those who walk righteously. I would say the focus there is walketh. If you're walking, you're, you're moving, you're continually moving. Thus, you're always implementing those things that are righteous. And they speak uprightly. You see, the Word of God is our authority. It is our pattern. It shows us how to live, how to walk, how to speak. So it gives us the ability to walk the walk and talk the talk. And then it gives a list, again there in verse 15, of those qualities that will possess, or will, that, that these righteous will possess. Despisers of gain of oppressions. They shake their hands away from holding bribes. You can't bribe these people. They're not in it for filthy lucre, for ill-gotten gains. They don't even want to hear about the shedding of blood. They even go so far as closing their eyes from seeing evil. You see those little monkeys back a few years ago of see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. That's kind of the extent is mentioned here. They want no part of it. Sin is a filthy poison. And they don't want to be poisoned by it. And then it gives the, the reward for those who walk uprightly. Verse 16. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall he be given. His waters shall be sure. So he's got a place of protection. It's a sure defense against all who would work them harm. And then you go so far as to say that they'll have bread and water. They'll have those things they need to survive. They might not have the most luxurious life but they'll have the things that they need to survive, and they'll be, they'll be sure. That's the type of comfort we as Christians can look forward to as we live righteously here on the earth. However, those who would be living in rebellion to God, all they have to look forward to is being the burning of lime. 
After all, that is the punishment that is talked about throughout the New Testament for those who would live wickedly. Now these, these few verses, verses 12 through 16, are basically a parallel to the first psalm. It gives a pattern of those who would live righteously and those who would live wickedly. Which category do we fall in? Will we, will we be as the thorns who are cut up and burned in the fire? Or, we, or will we be those walking up, up, uprightly and righteously and benefit from those blessings of verse 16 of, I, of Isaiah chapter 33? Living faithfully to God, Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 guarantees that we will be protected by our Heavenly Father and that we will receive the blessings of heaven when this life and the flesh are over. Now this afternoon we do offer the invitation to those who as Christians might have stumbled, who might have allowed sin back into their life, why not make, it, make the correction this afternoon to be restored, to have a proper relationship between you and your God. And for those who have not put on Christ, why not take the steps today to be baptized, to have your sins remitted, to become a Christian, and to have the Lord add you to His church, Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Whatever your need may be, please make it known as together we stand and sing. <laughs>